Howdy folks, Cal Dittmar, Trapping Fool. Uh, this video is, if you're watching this, hopefully you bought one of my trapping cans. And this video is on the coons, with the coon cuffs. In that can you get six of these. They aren't dyed, they're brand new traps, or Duke DPs. I paint mine white, I've painted them black, I've left them silver, I've done all kinds of different colors with them, but white seems to stand out and produces pretty good. Just for your information, if you're interested in painting them, that's why I didn't do anything to them, I'll let you decide. You can spray paint them whatever color you want, yellow, orange, blue, green, it don't matter. Or you can dip them and dye them and do them that way, like normal traps. Anyways, in this video, I want to show you just some basics for setting these and setting for coons where you'd set them. I'm actually at a pond here by my house. I'm going to do just a demonstration here and show you some sign of coon and where to set in relation to them here. First of all, I'm going to show you how to set these. They're pretty easy. You squeeze the trigger here, turn sideways here, see that? See how it goes down? See how it opens up there? See that bar going in there? What that does is when it's set, when it's set, that will come up and actually grab the coon and hold his leg. That's all it does in there. So you push this down. These are a one way. Let me see the try and get to the right spot here. Now yeah, let me just set this and I'll show you. And see right here, it goes into the trigger there. The dog goes in and locks and holds it. I don't know if you can see down into there, but the trigger there, it's a pull trigger. So when they pull out, it grabs them just like so. So anyways, with this, there's all kinds of different baits you can use on these. I actually use dog food, cat food, just dry dog food, cat food. I only fill it up. I don't want to go above the trigger in here. I always stay behind because you want them to reach in. You don't want them to get full before they get down into the trigger. So I only put about that much cat food, dog food in them. And then what I do a lot of times is I'll squirt a little bit of scent. Shellfish oil, crawfish oil, anise, vanilla, just any kind of scent just to kind of get the smell going and get them to come to it. Helps with the, uh, the sensory. So you've got the scent and then you've got the sight when they see it. So. What comes in this package, though, with the trap and can, are these grabbers, coon grabbers, that go in these DPs. These are, sh this one is a shellfish scented, but there's all kinds of flavors. But the way these work is they move the trigger forward. These will push right down into there. You want these nipples, these little tags, up is what will happen. That way the trigger can be right in between there. But you push it right down into there. I've found that sometimes your fingers aren't long enough. So if you find a stick, you can use a stick, wedge it around, turn it around in there, and get it set just right. We've got it set in there now. I don't know if you can see down into there. You've got the little prongs coming out this way in there. So that trigger is going to lay right in between them. Then we'll set it. just like so. Now what happens is he's going to see that in there, he's going to smell it, he'll be able to reach in there and feel it moving and he'll start digging at it and trying to get it and all of a sudden boom we've got them. Now with that done now we got to figure out how to cable these off and hold them here once we got them. This is what I do to mine. I put J hooks in and add a quick link. It's one of these screw quick links. This doubles as a couple things for me. What this does is when we come to fences, fence rows, I can hook this, unscrew it, hook it right to a hot fence, the grounded part where it's not hot actually, or I can go to a regular cattle fence with the squares and where the corners are where they meet, this actually will go right through and hook in there and lock. I've held many coons that way on fences that way. It's quick, it's easy, you're in, you're out, you can keep moving, getting that trap line going. The other thing with this is the uh, half inch rebar is another way to do it. Through here there's still room that I can run a rebar, which I forgot to bring one out for demonstration purposes, but we'll pretend this is a rebar stake. 
and usually there's a nut or something on the top to keep everything from sliding off but then it would go right through here or I can use this quick link also and go right through the quick link but then it goes on there and then it can spin around but it can't come up I have found about 18 inches 18 to 24 inch will hold a coon in most purposes I mean it depends how soft the ground is if it's real soft and muddy I probably wouldn't use a stake like this the other thing with this quick link I make cables that are six foot long with a loop on one end and another quick link on the other or just a hammered loop on both ends and what that does is I can go around a tree a tree that big around a fence whatever I can extend it out to reach it to where I need it or whatever then I can hook it in here so it locks onto the tree quick easy wrap it around come catch your quick link wrap it up baited stick it in the ground and you're moving just different ways to anchor the other thing is a lot of guys use the uh, earth anchors or wolf fangs I think they call them that you push down into the ground pogos that anchor off too. I use them sometimes but where I'm at it's a lot of hard clay ground and it's hard to drive those things so that's why I use a lot of the going around trees and saplings down at the base wrap around a couple times hook it off to this and I'm good to go so alright now that we got the basics I'm not gonna carry the stake with me and show you how to stake since we've talked about it I'll demonstrate I'll just show you what I do to stake it out over here but what I got here is a pond behind me as you can see the coons, there's a coon trail that runs along the bottom of this. I want to show you some coon tracks. I found some over this way. Not, it's kind of hard to see them over here, but then they go through the grass, a little bit of grass here, so you can see a coon trail going along the edge of a pond. Make sure, if you do watch this video, I'm going to do another one of these videos in the woods or up on land, so you can see another way of doing this and where you'd set and look for sign for them and stuff. So, Hang tight with me guys here. I'm going to grab the camera. We're going to move and we're going to move along the pond here and I'll talk a little bit about some stuff here and we'll try and get set up here. So bear with me here. I'm by myself again. So we'll get this done. All right. Here's the pond. You can see there. Good, good spot for coons. Coons are always running around this thing. Any pond is actually a good spot for coon. If you look here, there's a spot where I mow a trail through here actually right in the center of that trail can you imagine that white in the middle there at night coons are gonna see that coming up check it out then they're gonna smell the bait in there and come for it too so you could actually do it right out in the open like that these work anywhere alright moving along here coons usually use a little bit of cover here run along the edge actually there's some tracks right here let me do this there's a lot of frogs in here that's why the coons are here can you see the tracks here? These are all toe prints in here. See the tracks over this way? We'll move on down along the line here. You can see how they come through here, run along the edge here. Now actual, I'd probably put a set right in here. Somewhere in here, where it comes out of that grass. And then the other one, I'm gonna put over here because we're going to go along the edge of this pond like so then we get over here now we can probably hopefully you can see the coon prints down in here see the toes see the prints see the track and if you look see where they go right through here and then look right up into there you see that nice trail that goes right through that right through the water there they're running this and it goes on through and you can actually kind of see right about there where it goes through the next spot it keeps on going around the pond and then they'll move around there should be a good trails over there that you could find too but I don't really feel like wading through all of that and for demonstration purposes it'd be hard to see what I'm doing so I'm doing it right here in the open now <coughs> excuse me give me a second I'm gonna try and get set up here again this is the back side of this this is where we were talking about prints are right down there trail is right there going through actually it's a good spot you can see it right there I'm gonna set this down hopefully you can see me I don't know I'm gonna move again here 
I'm going to show you where I'm going to put this. You got the trail coming out here. Right here is the trail. Of course, it's not pointing on me. Try adjusting this a little bit. Sorry, folks. All right, you can see the trail coming out right here. The tracks are all right in here. And if you look right up in here, nice bare spot here, that's where we're going to put this. I'm going to throw that down there where I want to put it. I'm going to move this up again so you can see more of what I'm doing here. All right, there we go. Normally, I wouldn't kneel in the trail like I am and standing in it. You can see where I'm messing up the trail here. Usually, I'd stay out of it. I'd come from the top side here, stay out of there. But I'm demonstrating here, so I'm not really worried about it. All right, we got the bait in there. Oh, it's moved around on me. Get forced back into there where it needs to be. Bait's in there. Squeeze. Lock. Set. Remember? It's set here now. Dog's in the notch here. It's all locked in, ready to go. Bait's in there. Again, if we put dog food in there, there's all kinds of DP baits. There's all kinds of things you can use in here. Marshmallows. A lot of people use marshmallows. I try and stay away from them because if it rains on it, it gets soft, mushy, nasty, and if it's warm enough, you get ants in there, and it turned into a big gooey mess in there. It was just bad. Anyways, remember that spot I was showing you, how it kind of laid down here? I'm going to take this DP again, because we're out in the middle of nowhere. I'd probably stake through either here or here with a uh, rebar stake. I'd actually put the stake up there, come down here, and you want to run these in. I like to run them at a little bit of an angle, like so, so you can come up here and start digging in it. Some people, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it, but some will go straight up and down, like so. I don't like to do that because then the rain's falling in it and all kinds of stuff. So if you come at an angle a little bit, what that does is helps keep some of the rain and stuff out of it if it does rain on your set. It will drain out the bottom if a little bit gets in there, no big deal. And then of course it's staked off up here. Then the critter comes around here, smells this, comes up, checks it out. Boom, we got him. It'll pull out of here and he'll circle right around where you're staked off at. Uh, another trick that I do with these, something that you can do. Actually, I, the hole down here in the bottom of this one. I ran a piece of cable up and I ran a cable through a golf ball. So it comes up and the golf ball will actually sit on top of these. I use the black with the golf ball and the golf ball keeps the water and stuff out also and it's also side appeal. They'll come up and knock the golf ball off and be gone or not be gone, they'll dig around in there. It's just side appeal. But then the scent. The scent I always put in here. Don't go spreading shellfish because some of these will have shellfish oil that I'm including in it. Don't go pouring it all around here. Just a few drops in here is all you need just to get them to get in there and want what's in there. So, let me get readjusted here. And I'll do my closing here. So, hopefully that uh, helps you beginners with uh, DPs and coon trapping here. This is along a pond. Any pond, you find a pond in the woods, it's going to have a beat down coon trail. Look for the tracks. Look for scat on logs that going out into the ponds. Usually coons are out on those too. Like I said, watch for another video here. It's not going to be included in these boxes, but watch for another video on my YouTube channel here for trapping coons on dry land there with the DPs. I'll show you. I'll do another video on dry land. I may even do a couple different sets there, just DPs and a bucket set or something else. So. Watch for that later on if it's not out yet. By the time you're watching this video, I will have it out later this fall. So, until next time, make sure you subscribe to me. Hit the subscribe button up here on the YouTube channel for me. Find me on Instagram at Cal's Outdoors. And also check out my uh, Facebook page, my outdoor page at Caleb2016. Uh, check that Caleb Outdoors 2016 is the link on Facebook to find it. It'll take you right to it. Or it's Cal's Outdoors on Facebook. You might be able to Google it, and, or not Google it, but search it in Facebook and find it. So that wraps up the coon trapping for the trapping can. Hopefully you uh, bought one and enjoying it and getting uh, made your money, made millions off of it. 
So until next time, trapping full out.